if you stayed awake during the first 83 laps of the Portland Grand Prix, well, good on you. It was a snoozer, a big surprise. No big crash, no big caution going into turn one. Full credit to all the NTT IndyCar Series drivers who said, hey, we want you to let us loose coming out of turn 12, break away from each other, get to turn one on that opening lap and not be on top of each other and crashing into each other. Worked to perfection, maybe a little bit too good. Because again, there wasn't a lot to happen for the majority of the race. But late in the race, Renus VK uh, nerfed Jimmy Johnson into the wall, lap 84, I believe. And with that crash, we got a caution that shook things up quite a bit. Main topic coming out of Portland, Penske perfection. Will Power leading the championship, 523 points. 20 points behind his teammate, Joseph Newgarden. We'll talk about his day in just a moment. But uh, really interesting to see how Team Penske used that test they did here a week ago on Friday and absolutely lit everybody up all weekend. Scott McLaughlin, your winner, leading home Will Power. Big surprise of the day? Shouldn't be a surprise. The guy is just a human good luck charm. Scott Dixon starting 16th, motoring to third. Getting a lot of that done after the restart here. Big, big effort by Dixie, who went from about halfway through the race, looking at the points as they ran. Monterey would have been a Hail Mary. Basically, all the Chip Ganassi racing drivers were cooked about halfway through the race based on their positions. Leaving here, Marcus Erickson, 39, 39 points down, only 54 available at Monterey. Basically, everybody in front of Erickson would have to fall off the track almost right away for him to have a chance. So, mathematically eligible, yes. Practically, no. So what did we have happen here today with Scotty McLaughlin just kicking the crap out of everybody and Will Power doing a really good job to hold on and finish second? Not only did the Penske drivers come out of here leading the championship, uh, but we also have finally, thanks to Dixon and that huge drive to move forward by 13 spots. We do have a real Ganassi versus Penske, Penske versus Ganassi showdown here in a week at Laguna Seca. 20 points behind both Newgarden and Dixon. They're, quote, tied, but not really. Uh, if we think about Dixon, he is shy compared to Newgarden on wins. Newgarden with a whole heck of a bunch. So that's where we are at. Uh, Scotty McLaughlin winning today, improved from being farther back. He's only 41 points back, but again, there's no way on earth that is going to do anything for him to be able to win the championship here in seven days' time. So we'd leave here with three drivers really in the fight for the championship left. You think about what else happened, Marcus Erickson. Uh, yeah, rough day, all fell apart today. Alex Pillow definitely mathematically ruled out. Uh, Pato Award drove his behind off, finished fourth. Great effort by him, crowd just loving him absolutely. Graham Rahal finished fifth. A really, really sharp performance by him. That team as a whole on a rise. And Callum Eilat, P9 for the Little Hunkos hauling a racing team as I have a, a bit of a creep over my shoulder here. Uh, some pretty fun stuff here happening in the top 10. Joseph Newgarden, though, his race, his day dictated by their choice of what tires to use to close. Going out on primaries, he fell back after that restart. Finished eighth, so didn't tighten the gap, went from three behind power to start the event to 20 behind, but he's still in striking distance. Other than that, we have a kid we call Spud. Uh, we need to talk to him about his day because he did well and then it wasn't as well. So we're going to find out why it was well, but not well. Uh, David Malukas. Hi. I believe you like the number one and the number four and you put them together. I think to finish 14th, or did you yes, improve? Yes, we here? finished 14th, right? Yeah, we okay, did. Okay, just 14th. making sure nothing else. Maybe you pass um, someone on the way into the pits. No, no, we we couldn't do. We struggled to pass. We. Um, why didn't you win? Why didn't you? Decide I know, to right? Win? I don't. Your why? strategy was flawed. Well, to be honest, our strategy was not perfect. We definitely failed on the strategy a little bit. Um, we were, were also a little bit expecting a yellow at the start for the tire that we chose to start off on the on the reds. Which there was there was no yellow. You could have started one, right? Take the initiative. Uh, I could have saying. started one, but instead, I actually did some good move there on the start. You did. Yeah, gained gain a couple of positions there, 
And that first set was great. Like it was like I was like, wow, where well, this is actually gonna be a good race for us. We have a lot of pace. And then we decided to put the primaries on just to see what was what, like you know, for decide for the rest of the race what we want to do. And those primaries sucked like so bad for us. I it, uh, we went from sixth all the way back to like 16th, I think. So for folks who've maybe heard this season about tire inconsistencies and other stuff. I'm not asking you to get a grumpy call from the series or Firestone, but at least explain to folks when you say I've got a brand new set of something and they don't perform as expected, what is the things that they're not doing to help folks understand what make them not your favorite tire? Yeah, so normally when you get a new fresh boots of tires, um, you know, grip increases a lot more. You can come out of corners a lot quicker. You can charge the corners a lot better. The car holds on. You can put pressure on that tire mid-corner. You know, it holds. You have all this grip. Um, and, you know, when you put a new fresh on, sometimes you go out and it doesn't do that. And it just seems like there's no grip there. And if anything, we have we just put on older tires. That's what it almost felt like. Were they? Could you hear him saying, like, screw you? Uh, yes, yeah, okay. so it I, normally it does that the first, you know, first two laps on slick tires, but when you get, you know, an inconsistent set, they just scream the entire run, and that's when you know you're like, mm, damn it, this is, uh, this is not going to go well. And then, yeah, so once we got the primaries off, we went back to the, to the alternates, and alternates till the end, which was going okay, we started to gain back some time on other people that went primaries, and at the end, uh, we had that yellow, tried to do something, and, and then we lost the rear. So we really struggled to just keep the tires with us this this uh, this weekend. So, yeah, that's yeah. kind of the end of that. Okay, well, I'll ask one kind of serious question, and then we'll say goodbye. As our friends in the broadcast here were noting, and have some have been noting more recently, it's not uncommon to see you mixing it up with your new bus bro family <laughs> yeah. or some other folks who are... Indy 500 winners and champions know that today's race result clearly isn't what you're hoping for, but we did have yet another demonstration that you, when things are going well, you can be up there fighting with some of the biggest names in the series. Tell me about that. Like, for real, that, that has to be something that pleases you. No, yeah, it, it feels uh, it feels very nice, you know, to to see see myself, you know, being by, side by side with these big names. You know, sometimes you come across with them and you know happen many times during the season, but it was always off of, you know, different strategy and who knows what was what going on, you know, cuz Will Power passes me. It's like, nice, I'm racing Will Power, but by the end he's third. I'm like 18th. So, at least that, you know, St. Louis, it was, you know, we're, I'm racing side by side with these big names, but also being with their strategy and competing with them. Um, and it just, it feels very good, you do know. Do those expectations, do you feel any pressure of expectations? Like, hey, this, I've kind of shown I can be there, so I should be there every time, or do you just not yeah, that bother you? There's, there's definitely pressure there, but, you know, I, I realize the way your body reacts when you're nervous and excited, it's the exact same way. So I normally just tell myself I'm very excited of the occasion, which I definitely am. Um, but I'm not going to lie, when I was pulling up on the two Penske's at St. Louis, I definitely was... Um, I don't know if I can swear in here, but you I was say whatever you want. I was shitting my pants, you know. I was like, "Oh my God, you know, this is uh, this is actually happening," and you know, the the lap, laps were counting down: 17, 16, 15. Go do something. 14, 13. And, you know, and it's like, "Oh my God!" Yeah, the stress starts to build up, and you get nervous. But at the end of the day, I still had a blast. Okay. P14 wasn't exactly what you wanted. Not, but not bad. You're still still, still good points. Still starchy fast to those still, who love you. Still still starchy. The little spud finished the race. Little see, I think that's a character on the new Game of Thrones series, by the way. Little spud. Seriously? No. Wait, the House of Dragons? Yeah. The new one. Yeah. Have you seen it yet? I watched like five minutes of it, but it seems pretty gory and. I saw the first episode. It was a little. Mm, not little, bad. A little yawn, yawn-ish. Okay. I've been watching The Boys lately. Uh, yes, yeah, same. Well, season three. I'd watched um, um, one yep. and two. I'm season already on three, season three. Yeah. If you've ever, if you've never seen The Boys, The Boys is watch really good. Season one and season two. Opening yeah. episode of season three. Things you can never unsee. Yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, oh. That okay, but that show is like super, super rated R. It's like really <laughs> gruesome and disgusting, and there's some some bits, but it's a great show and. It's like my type of comedy that's just so blatant and it's so it's awesome. It's a great show. Definitely go watch The Boys. That is it's literally what I'm watching right now. We have the same look. Great minds think alike. Uh, I think we're good on promos. I think we're yeah, good. Yeah, we're good. We're, we're good. good. Yeah, way good. Okay. Like, so, so good. TV show recommendations. That's how we'll close this episode. Yeah. Head into Monterey and uh, 
Oh. Go, go do big things. And it's been a whole weekend, and that TV has still been crooked. Yes. Hey, can you see? I think you can see it, yeah. I think there's a pill now available. I've seen advertised on TV that if it's crooked, it'll make it straight. Oh, my God, Marshall. Okay, there he is! I'm signing off. Little Spud is out on that note. Bye.